All right, we are live. Good morning, everyone. Good afternoon. Good evening, wherever you are in the world right now. I am Monica Hutchinson, and I've got Krista Kathleen here with me, and we are the co-founders of Fearless Public Speaking. And we wanted to jump in and talk to you a little bit because, you know, we've been talking about lately how the idea of public speaking might feel a little ridiculous right now, <laughs> just with the way that the world is. And we wanted to challenge that because that word public can throw people off. But public speaking, even when the world is not that public, is totally possible. In fact, now is a perfect time to start putting yourself out there in a completely different way than you ever have before. So the cool part is that right now it gives us a chance to expand our view on what public speaking really is. And it's super easy to get caught up in that all or nothing context right now and see lack. Like there's nowhere to speak. No one's hiring speakers. There's no networking events. I can't get my message out. You know, no, can't, don't. All of those things that we tell ourselves when there's a lot of uncertainty in the world. Um, I had this thought yesterday and then Brandy, who was our photographer at our last retreat, posted something about it too, that this is a grief cycle we're all going through right now. So we have to go through the space of like fear to, um, you know, mourning and then to acceptance. And when we get to acceptance, that's where we're able to start moving forward. So, um, you know, for, for everyone who is ready to move into that place of moving forward because we have a new reality, then that's what we're here today to talk about is how do you move forward when it feels like there might not be public speaking opportunities? Krista, did you want to add anything into that? Yeah, so a lot of our audience is coaches and business owners. I mean, I think that's 99% of our audience actually. And a lot of them want to, you know, become motivational speakers and to share their truth with the world and to use their stories as a way to help and empower others and to, you know, start their coaching businesses. And so I agree like with what Monica has been saying is, you know, we could look at everything that's going on right now with the coronavirus and say, Oh, you know, this, I, I wanted to do all these speaking opportunities and speaking gigs and now I can't do it because I can't network and I can't go anywhere in public. And, um, but the reality is, is like, if you're going to be successful in your career, you can't think about what's not happening. You have to get creative and you have to innovate. And so that's where you can say, all right, what tools and resources and opportunities do I have now? You know, how can I become a public speaker online? Maybe instead of saying that public speaker, maybe you say I'm a virtual speaker now, right? Um, so that's that powerful mindset shift we want to help you all to have today is that you can still go out there and be really loud and share your message and your story and inspire people. But, you know, we're going to have to get a little bit more creative and there's lots of opportunities to do it online. And Monica and I are going to be sharing with you some of those different places of where you can do your speaking online. You know, the really cool thing is right now, too, um, in addition to what Krista said, is I know that we hear from a lot of people like it's scary to share our message right now or people might think that I'm complaining or I haven't gone through that difficult of stuff and other people have. This is the exact right time to start sharing because I hate to say misery loves company because that's not what I mean, but I think the sentiment of it is true. And if you flip that to like people who have pain really need help and how to get through it right now. So when you're able to show up virtually and start sharing your story, people are listening. This is the biggest thing that I think we've seen <clears throat> since all of this started was people are online all the time. They have time to do it. They're scrolling and our feeds are cluttered with so much negativity, so much fear, and really to be that beacon of light in the darkness to shine up and, or to show up and say, hey, you know what? I've been through some shitty stuff too, and this is how I overcame it. And we're all going to overcome this whole thing. We're going to end up on the other side, whatever that looks like. It may be a different world. It already is a different world. But to show up as a beacon of light in the darkness right now is completely embraced by the collective audience in the world who is just looking for those uplifting messages. So this 
there's a lot of opportunity within this. And I don't mean opportunity to take advantage. I've heard that term and a lot of people saying out there like, oh, don't take advantage of the situation. I think on the contrary, you're not taking advantage of the situation. You're accepting what is the world now and you're saying, how can I serve? How can I show up? How can I share my message in a way that's going to help people get through this difficult time, this challenging time? So um, in addition to that, you know, with people showing up and watching more online, that includes companies and it includes people who need speakers. So one of the things I was telling Krista um, yesterday or the day before, I can't remember what I see coming out of this. And this is having been in the corporate space for 13 years uh, before I started my own business. But what I see happening from all this is companies are really going to start looking at how they run their businesses because they're going to see, well, if we can have our entire workforce from home, then we save a lot of money on overhead and actual expenses there in person in the office. And so I believe that companies are going to start reevaluating their staffing and their business continuity and look at where can we have more people at home. And with that happening, more companies are going to start looking at virtual training and the option to have training done not only through quarantine, but afterwards when they have more people at, uh, at home. When I was in the corporate sphere, you know, we already started to see this shift towards more virtual trainings or virtual presentations. I was in charge of like basically facilitating, co-facilitating for a while, but then kind of took over the project of uh, training unconscious bias, which was a diversity and inclusion course. And it started out in a physical setting where we were teaching managers and individuals and had all these activities and it was super interactive. But then the company wanted to start looking at how can we make this more sustainable, more feasible so that it can be taught online. And that saves thousands and thousands of dollars of travel. Every time I would go to one of our site locations in the US, it costs probably $1,500. So to save that every single time, you know, people didn't think it was possible. I've heard so many people be like, oh, virtual sessions, it's so boring, we can't do that. But if you're able to make the shift, then companies are going to start appreciating that and they're going to want to try it out. And that doesn't have to do with just um, facilitating training. It can be with virtual presentations as well. So Krista, did you have anything you wanted to add to that? Hmm. Well, you know, and just to let all of you know, too, like Monica does have a corporate background and I have a service based background. I was a labor and delivery nurse for five years. And so it's going to be it's going to be interesting to see how, you know, like what Monica is seeing with the shift in corporate, how they're becoming more online. And I'm even curious with the service based industry, like how they're going to start doing more maybe like medical appointments and check-ins online or need to I remember when I was a nurse and they would have us come in for like a 30 minute training and you know that's a waste of gas money and time and childcare and like so much of this stuff can be done online now as we're realizing but a lot of times it's hard people resist change and they feel like stuck in the stories oh I'm not techy or it's not going to be valuable or there's all that kind of stuff going on. But I mean, if we can look at the positive with this coronavirus outbreak, it is going to help, you know, so many business owners and, and companies like see how we can really shift things to be more efficient and use the beautiful technology that is available to all of us. So. Yeah, I am. So George Carroll, who is my coach, uh, I'm in his Transformation Academy, and we were supposed to have a two-day neurolinguistic programming NLP retreat last weekend, and he was able to convert it, this, this in-person session, to completely virtual, and I got to give him mad credit because it was fun and engaging. We used breakout rooms. We were able to still practice, and it was so powerful having that community, <clears throat> even in the midst of this, not being able to connect in person. So there are opportunities if we're just willing to look at it a little bit differently. And this is where we want to talk about, like, how can this look with speaking engagements or with speaking up? So some of the tips that we want to share with you, first of all, is 
now is the time to start doing your research, okay? We've got this time, we're at home. This is where, you know, maybe you were putting it off because you're like, oh, I don't have time for that. I just wanna go out and do the thing. I've been guilty of that. But now is the time to start looking up companies and organizations where you'd want to do speeches and figure out who their point people are or just start you know finding connections linkedin is a great place if you're looking for a more corporate atmosphere i think there are a lot of nonprofits on there too but if you know people who have worked with these organizations in whatever capacity start asking questions i know that right now people are doing a lot of zoom meeting calls uh, just to make connections, you know, catch up with a friend who you know uh, has connected with a different organization. I mean, it's good to catch up with them, of course. You know, you, you don't want to just make this about what you need from it. I mean, definitely connect with them. But it's a great chance to ask questions and see, you know, who can I talk to? And then being able to <clears throat> come at it from a place of service when you are reaching out to these people, acknowledging where they're at, like, hey, I know that right now things are a little crazy and in-person presentations aren't really uh, an option, but I'd like to get creative with you and see where we can uh, serve your employees in a way or serve your clientele, your audience in a powerful way. And it's also a great try it before you buy it opportunity. Um, companies do still have budgets for speaking. I, I know that, again, George just booked a speaking gig for uh, later on in the year. So companies, they are saving money in some ways, um, but they still have these budgets too that, that they want to spend on different trainings. So really talking to your friends and getting creative and figuring out who the point people are is the best way to start connecting. And if you are someone who jumps in there and says, I can do virtual training. I can make this engaging. I will support your people during this time of quarantine. Then companies' ears are going to be perking up. Before where they would have resisted, now they're going to be like, oh, oh, you can? We can still do something? And it helps them be of service to their employees and their audience too. So what, what would you like to add? What other tips, Krista? Well, Another important thing to remember is that anything that you want or desire in life, you can't sit back on the couch and eat popcorn and watch Netflix and expect it to come to you. Like, I mean, that would be super awesome if that happened. But the reality of the situation is you have to be a go-getter. You have to go out there and ask for what you want and what you need. And I, and I believe there's two parts. I think there's a spiritual part of this. And then there's like, a spiritual feminine part and then an active like masculine part. So as far as like the spiritual part, I'll address that first is, you know, if you want more speaking opportunities, if you want to be more visible in your business and with your message and you want to, you know, reach more people, you know, I don't know what your morning practice is, but talk to the universe, talk to your spirit guides and ask them for leads, ask them for ideas, breadcrumbs, clues, opportunities. I do that all the time when it comes to, you know, who am I supposed to work with in my business or what group program am I supposed to do? Or am I supposed to collaborate with this person or be on this podcast? So don't be afraid to use, you know, God, the universe, your spirit teams, whatever it is that you believe in, ask them for what you want and what you need and for support. And you'll be so surprised at what shows up for you. Um, second of all, I can't begin to tell you. I So I've been running my coaching business for almost five years now. And anytime I need something, I just literally go onto my personal page and I post it and I literally ask for what I need. So like, if you want more speaking opportunities, you can literally create a simple and easy post and just say, hey, everyone, I'm looking for more speaking opportunities, you know, virtual speaking opportunities. I like to talk about the areas of women's empowerment or helping women to transition after a divorce or, you know, be really specific what it, with what your audience is and what your niche is. And you'll be so surprised that like people be like, oh, yeah, I know someone who is looking for someone to do a speaking gig on that the other day, or I know someone who can help you out. So like the power of asking is huge. And again, too, if, you know, if you want to be featured on a certain podcast, like reach out to that podcast, go to their, their podcast episode or, or go to their website and, and see where they, where you can contact them. Right. And, and talk about collaborating and being on their episode or, 
there's just so many different like opportunities out there. But one of the worst things you can do is just sit back and say, oh, I want this thing, but I don't know how to get it. Like one of my past mentors used to say, that's a really dangerous way of thinking because it keeps us stuck and it keeps us not feeling empowered and knowing how to use our resources. So my biggest, so I guess to summarize all this up is like, if you want more virtual speaking opportunities out there, just, just get out there right now and start asking around. That's, that's the best thing you can do and the most effective. And you're going to be so surprised at, you know, how many people are willing to help you out. Well, and in addition to that, too, if that's feeling overwhelming, like, oh, my God, I don't have my speech put together right now. Actually, sometimes it's the fire underneath your ass when you go talk to somebody and somebody says, sure, we'll hire you or we'll have you speak. And it's like, shit, now I have to write it. I can tell you when I've applied for speeches before and I've had to do it, I'm like, oh, well, as soon as knowing it's going to happen, then you got to actually do it. I mean, that lights a fire under my ass. So, um, and really, this is also a great time to start building your speech, mapping out your story and putting some structure behind it, and then practicing it, whether that's in front of the mirror, your dog, whoever you are in quarantine with, getting on a Zoom call and running it with somebody else, and then starting to release it in Facebook Lives or videos online is a great opportunity to make a name for yourself. I really see this as a great time for audience building mm -hmm. because people are consuming so much more content online than they were even several weeks ago. And even several weeks ago, they were consuming a shit ton of content online. Mm -hmm. But because we have all this time um, and, you know, we need an escape sometimes it's it's kind of the opposite of where we were so like oh I, I need to spend more time with my family and now we're like oh i'm with my family all the time i need to escape for a few minutes and have something different right. people are coming to video content especially so trying stuff out online and getting really vulnerable and being like hey you know krista does this all the time when she does her toastmaster speeches and it's great she gets um a lot of you know, different feedback and everything, but it's an awesome opportunity, not only for feedback, but to boost your confidence, because the more people get to watch you and see you, the more they're going to want to watch you and see you and support you. So that kind of leads into us talking about something that we've created for all of you for next week, because we know that this can still seem a little bit daunting right now, especially if you were first starting and you were like, oh, I'm going to do this. And then all this happened. Now you're like, uh, I don't know what to do. But Krista and I have created this five day challenge for you. Krista, you want to tell them more about it? Yeah. So it's called how to become a fearless public speaker in five days. And this is a mini version of our fearless public speaking Academy that starts this April. And we wanted to give you a little bit of a taste of what it's like to work with Monica and I and to transform from a scared to prepared public speaker. I mean, a lot of us know public speaking is the number one fear out there known as glossophobia. And we're really committed to help women getting through that and there is so many different ways to do that so in this challenge you know we're going to help you to really nail your elevator pitch so you can confidently tell people who you are and what you do and how you serve them we've got so many great you know videos and resources in there i have a, a hypnotherapy meditation where i'm going to help you to really you know figure out why is sharing your story being visible talking in front of others freaking you out um, what other things do we have available for them in the challenge, Monica? Um, it's really practical, which is kind of cool. Every day, it's not only, um, you know, video content and workbooks and everything, but it's actually like tangible to do things, worksheets that you can download and print off or uh, be filling out to start doing the work right away. So, you know, we have all the supporting videos and recordings and everything like that, which are awesome. And then we have you do the damn thing. And doing the damn thing involves getting in the Facebook group and going live every single day during the challenge, which is a powerful way for you to try it out, test out what we've been talking about here. And the stuff that we ask you to do in this challenge is not hard. It may feel a little freaky, but it's it's really nice broken down into digestible chunks. And we don't give you more than three action items per day to do. So it shouldn't take you more than about 15, 20 minutes every day to complete the action items and, and then just get to start working on those public speaking skills that you have been talking about wanting to do. Yep. 
So yeah, we're going to have you go live every single day in the group. So by the end of the five days, you're going to be so much more confident with being on video. I know that freaks a lot of people out. I have a lot of clients that hire me because they want to do more Facebook lives and share their message and feel confident and not all over the place with that. So they also, um, on our last day, we're going to help you to transform your life story and all the things that have happened in your life into your signature speech as well. So then that way you can use that speech to form, you know, books and workshops and group programs and retreats. And I mean, it's just, there's so much value in this challenge that we're hosting. This is the second time that we're hosting it. Um, the first time that we did it last fall, we just got so much great feedback about women who are like, you know, oh my gosh, like I, I feel so more confident speaking now. And this is something I've been terrified of my whole life. And I mean, if you think about it, like if this is a fear that you can overcome and you can really like there isn't anything that's not that you can't do at the end of the day. Right. Cause like being visible and putting yourself out there and sharing your story and not giving a fuck and showing up the way that you need to show up in the world. Like if you can do that, like you've got it made in life and anything else after that is not scary anymore. So this is like, yeah, this challenge is going to be amazing. I think the greatest part too, is that when you complete all five days of the challenge, you get entered into a drawing to win a spot in our nine week fearless public speaking Academy, which is it's a $1,500 course and it's $4,000 in value, which is insane. But Chris and I really felt strongly about wanting to bring someone in and reward you for your hard work and let you continue to do the work. So amazing prize that we're offering. <clears throat> this is why in this group at this point, we are welcoming in women. Um, I think we can welcome in spiritual men. We just won't put you in the drawing for the prize just because our, our academy is only for women or those identifying as women at this point. So, um, but that prize is just awesome. And you'll be enrolled in our nine week public speaking academy with nine other women. And it's just a chance to continue to hone those skills. And it's also another great community during the uncertain times so we're really excited about that too yeah yeah we love for men <laughs> yeah, we definitely do <laughs> so we're going to drop the link <clears throat> to register for the challenge in the comments in this live mm -hmm. and all you have to do is click on it and you'll put your information just your name and your email address you'll get a kickoff email after that that'll tell you exactly what to do before monday it'll point you towards the facebook group where you can go join and you can even start looking at the content now uh, ahead of time so you know if you're someone who likes to prepare likes to do things in advance you've got everything up front it's really cool it's arranged in units in the challenge so it's really easy to follow and we really look forward to seeing you all within that challenge and seeing you just transform your speaking and your ability to powerfully stand in your truth. Yeah. So like Monica said, we will put the link to register in the comments. We start on Monday, Monday morning, the 30th. So get signed up today. It's completely free. You'll get a welcome email after you sign up. That's going to give you a link to the Facebook group and, and tell you the other directions on how to get started. You're going to make a lot of new friends. You're going to be doing a lot of Facebook lives. You're going to be a more confident speaker and presenter. And you're going to just be, you know, hopefully you're going to like forget about all this coronavirus stuff and be so focused on your goals and your dreams and your future. And yeah, it's going to be awesome. So, all right. Well, thank you, everybody. Just to recap today. It doesn't have to be a time of limit right now. There are a lot of opportunities for public speaking if you just are able to look at it from a different perspective and start expanding the way that you think about speaking. So make connections, start working on your speech, put yourself out there in your social media, start practicing speaking, do your research on what companies or what different places you can connect with to do speaking and make the connections now because the more you're able to provide value now through all of this, the more agile people see you are and the more likely they are to hire you for live speaking gigs once everything is back to, I'm not even gonna say normal because it's a new state of normal of the world after all of this settles. So yeah, you know, just don't put these dreams behind you. They're still possible. And Chris and I are here to help you. We will see you in the challenge on Monday.
See you in Bye. the next Bye.